distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. I want to extend my warmest greetings to all of you present, <coughs> and it gives pleasure and joy to appear before Parliament to present our budget vote and also to interact with you, the representatives of our people. The centenary of Madiba and Masisulu is, is celebrated this year under the theme, Be the Legacy. Had President Mandela and Masi Sulu lived, they would have turned 100 years old <coughs> this year. This year also marks the 40th anniversary of the untimely passing of that patriot and combatant for the liberation, for our, for African liberation, Professor Robert Bangaliso Sobukwe. These patriots of our country were deeply influenced by inscription found at the entrance of Solomon Mashangu Freedom College in Mazimbu, Tanzania, which reads thus, and I quote, ours was not for personal glory, not distinction, but for a noble cause of our time, the liberation of the people of South Africa and the entire humanity. These giants of our country lived because they had surrendered their very beings to the people. They lived because their very beings embodied love, an idea, hope, and an aspiration, a vision of collective destination. Talking about the giants and legends, we want to congratulate the Lady Smith Black Mambazo for their fifth Grammy Award. This group under Professor Joseph Shabalala has held the South African flag high across the globe he has multiplied the South African heritage to all of humanity and has imparted his indigenous knowledge to younger generations. This is our identity, our culture, our heritage, and we are not mimicking anyone about it, but the world is learning from us. They are still abroad as we speak, but here they are representative of the group uh, the manager of this group, Mr. Olani Majozi, I don't know whether he's here, if he can stand up, is here to represent <laughs> the Mambazo. We have started a process with the Black Mambazo uh, to support them in what they call the Lady Smith Black Mambazo Mobile Academy. And this academy is going to ensure that the legacy of Ubabu Shabalala lives long after he's gone. The road to our democracy in South Africa is drenched in blood and punctuated by centuries of racial and economic subjugation, discrimination, and oppression, with many ordinary South Africans, especially the youth, making the ultimate sacrifice in the quest for freedom and democracy. Today, South Africa is a thriving, burgeoning constitutional democracy as a result of immense sacrifices made. Our freedom was never free or given to us as a gift. Others perished as a result. It is important also to note and acknowledge the glaring reality that South Africa's freedom would remain hollow for the majority of the, of the people, predominantly blacks and Africans, if they remain on the fringes of the economy. Radical socioeconomic transformation, therefore, is a vehicle that will lead South Africa into a type of society envisioned in the NDP. South Africa was conquered by force and ruled by force for hundreds of years until 1994. However, this does not justify any form of brutality, hence the focus on nation building and social co uh, cohesion. In confronting this pernicious ideology of racism, the department has focused on the following pillars, <coughs> ensuring education of our people against racism and most importantly, the centrality of building a non-racial society, asserting mobilization of all uh, in our country against racism and its manifestation, regulating unwanted behavior, uh, which is racism in our society, which we are doing as government together with other departments led by Justice Department to ensure that this ideology is, is criminalized in South Africa. The South African reality is that 
society remained fragmented and this accentuated by incidents of femicides, killings of people with albinism, emerging practices of cannibalism, abuse of drugs by youth, and many other social ills. In this regard, social cohesion advocates are active in pursuing cases against perpetrators of killings of people with albinism. This is an ad in addition to the work they do in promoting constitutional values, shaping public opinion on major media platforms. The moral regeneration movement has been reinvigorated and additional board members have been appointed. This new epoch of the MRM seeks to re-energize the RDP of the soul as espoused by the father of our democratic South Africa, President Mandela. Dealing with damaged moral fiber of our society is being given attention through programmatic work of the MRM in partnership with the Department of Arts and Culture. The Charter for Positive Values is central to the work of the MRM. Accordingly, the Department of Arts and Culture supported MRM pro program of, et of ethical leadership in, in partnership with SALGA. Our support extended to MRM programs across ideological divide, especially the code of election ethics. 2012 Social Cohesion Summit in Cliptown was a milestone of its kind in bringing leaders from all backgrounds together and adopted declaration. The follow-up summit was in 2015 in Port Elizabeth, which gave impetus to the declaration because of its practical approach to engaging society in the discourse of social cohesion. In this context, conversations on this important area were extended to communities, meaning beyond ac academic spaces. In the last three years, there has been over 100 conversations across nine provinces of the country. The department developed themes for conversations and it became apparent that people are generally interested in discussing issues that affect them directly on a daily basis. For example, people are concerned uh, with issues and levels of unemployment in our country, service delivery, crime, and, and so on. Some of the dialogues focus on topical issues uh, of uh, racism, uh, xenophobia, and, and the likes. The national symbols of our country should remain central in the promotion of patriotism. In this regard, the department has printed the Passport of Patriotism booklet to educate our people about national identity. The continuous distribution of the booklet is about speeding up the program to heighten awareness and consciousness. The passport is widely distributed at national events and also constitutes an important part of life orientation curriculum in schools. This education also includes protocols of handling national flags. In addition, national flag has been hoisted in more than 80% of our schools in the country. Our national days are one of the levers for government to promote nation building and social cohesion. Therefore, the commemorations of these days should reflect our quest to build a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. The department has noted the concern that these commemorations have become an African affair. Hence, efforts are made to ensure inclusivity. This year, for instance, the human rights Day has seen participation of diverse political formations, community organizations, and people of other races. This is work in progress. The themes of the National Days have integrated the centenary of President Nelson Mandela and Mama Albertina Sisulu. Most importantly, the department has adopted an approach that ensures that activities for National Days are extended to the full month. Cultural diplomacy, is also another important part of our work. The department, because global influences are realities of our country, there is abounding evidence that global integration is not limited to economic issues, but it also encapsulates social and cultural. Therefore, the cultural seasons programs are critical to ensure people-to-people -people exchanges and relations, and showing our cultural products. Since 2012, the, su the success of this initiative has been punctuated by a shift 
of focus from European countries to BRICS countries and on the African continent. The department has been able to undertake cultural seasons programs to China, Russia, and later this year, Brazil season will, lead, will, will be the beneficiary. India will be the focus of the seasons towards the end of the financial year. On the, on the continent, cultural seasons have been successful and there's been exchanges with other countries on the continent like Western Sahara, where we have a joint program in the film industry. Algeria and Gabon has hosted successful seasons as well. The next countries sh scheduled for the seasons are Angola, Kenya, and, and Ghana. Africa Month links directly to and aims to support and strengthen Africa Day declared by OAU in 1963, 25th of May. <clears throat> it also provides an opportunity to reflect on the philosophies and values of the founding fathers and pioneers of the continent, including Kwame Nkrumah, Leopold Seda Senghor, and many others. It focuses on Africanness, African unity, African identity, and pride. During the past three years, the program of Africa Month has been extensive in sharing of perspectives about the continent through hosting of colloquia, the institutions of higher learning in communities like villages and townships, showcasing the kaleidoscope of cultural activities of the continent in various communities. Some of the prominent scholars that graced uh, our colloquia program during the past three years include Professor Nguki Wationgo, Professor Olisho Inka, Professor Ben Okri, Professor Nuruddin Farah, and many others. The cultural development branch is central in the transformation of arts sector, known as the cultural and creative industry. The organizations in this industry are concentrated in three provinces, namely Gauteng, Western Cape, and KwaZulu Natal. Equally, the same trend holds for the sector companies in these provinces. There are about 2,400 companies mainly dominated and owned by white. However, we believe that improved access to, to funding has also shaped ownership patterns whereby in many rural provinces, black ownership and businesses is above 50% is above 50, 50 This improved ownership is confirmed by research results of SACO, the South African Cultural Observatory in partnership with the DAC. The challenge remains that of ensuring the gender balance in the area of business ownership because the industry is still dominated by males. Indeed, the national picture indicates that overall black ownership currently in the industry is 52%. The Mzansi Golden Economy remains a strategic program for funding within the sector. The program will continue to intensify the realization of the departmental objectives of job creation content development and human capital development in the sector. The three work streams that are important here in this area are cultural events, the touring ventures, and the public art. Contribution to transformation framework is one of the main target market priorities. The other is the participation, especially by black women, youth, and people with disability uh, in the sector. The other is the job creation. Uh, another deals with the geographic spread. This approach directs the funds to the most dedicated people and contribute to their livelihood. For example, arts organizations and community arts centers, professional artists, and so on. On the flagship programs, the department has identified new flagship programs that will diversify the previous outlook that was largely festi festivals. This diversification will include new projects in books, fashion, culinary, and other sectors. On the provincial flagships, the department will continue to support the provincial initiatives to the tune of 36 million rands, as we have been doing, that by, by ensuring that each province gets the support which the department has always been doing. These projects, amongst others, includes 
uh, the ones like the Kalahari Desert Festival in the Northern Cape, Mpumalanga Cultural Experience, Isingu Say Tu Cultural Festival in the Eastern Cape that continues to preserve and promote the beautiful heritage of this country. On the national flagship, uh, Indone remains one of the national projects that promote the indigenous knowledge system of the country, and it takes place in all nine provinces, with the main event happening in KwaZulu Natal province. The other flagships that the DAC will continue to support are Cape Town Carnival in the Western Cape province, Gauteng Carnival, Paliaruna, We Can Arts Festival in Kwamashu townships in KZN. All flagships are in line with our mandate of nation building and social cohesion as they keep coming up with the themes of celebrating diversity of this country. This work stream on the cultural events, this work stream supported 119 projects throughout the country to the value of 40 million rands. The projects supported range from lit literary festival like Diego Creative Writers in Limpopo, on human capital development, the program supported Battle of Municipalities project that focused on capacitating young musicians in the value chain of the music industry in the Eastern Cape through workshops. On fashion, the program funded the Berlin Fashion Show also in the Eastern Cape. That is our own Berlin here. Uh, the program will, uh, in the current financial year, continue to diversify its support of the various genres, uh, as currently beneficiation has been more biased towards music festivals. On the touring ventures, program supported 78 projects across the country to the total of 26 million, uh, 26 million rands. Some of these projects were international tours, whilst others were local. The late Lucky Dube's daughter, Nungulego Dube, is amongst those supported. She performed with a band in Jamaica at the Rebel Salute Reggae Festival in honor of her father, telling the South African story and celebrating reggae music. As a result of the support, she received bookings to perform at a festival in Brazil, at Salvador Bahia, also in Germany, at the Reggae Jam Festival. These deals, thank you, these deals con uh, concluded while still in Jamaica. And uh, may Miss uh, Nunkulego Dube and the manager, Miss Langen, stand up, please, for all of us to see them, if they have arrived already. The incubator program, the aim of the incubator program is to provide artists with holistic arts creative business training that will propel them to breaking grounds in the industry and also develop models uh, uh, to fully fledged arts enterprises. Today, the incubator program has benefited 2,961 young artists who have produced and staged more than 30 new sets of productions and have launched cultural, cultural enterprises in various disciplines. Phase two of the program is also, open, is also to open doors of learning to private incubator initiatives. To date, 14 private incubator initiatives have been supported to train young actors, filmmakers, fashion designers, playwrights, and media communicators in Gauteng, Free State, Western Cape, KZN, and Pumalang on the Living Legends. Since the program was launched in 2015, the Living Legends have participated in more than 100 public programs and, imparted more, and impacted to more than 2,000 participants ranging from master classes, colloquia, guest lectures, and incubator workshops at community art centers and public entities across the country. They have influenced, shaped, and shared their skills, knowledge, and African wisdoms, and African wisdom largely with the youth. Part of the initiative is to engage the living legends actively in programs that promote arts, culture, and heritage development, as well as provide opportunities for interaction and impart skills, knowledge, and experience to younger generation. The program is aligned to the Living Legends policy, which seeks to preserve our living legends and to create awareness of practices with different generations. During 2017-18 financial year, 
the Living Legends participated in incubator trade fair for inaugural graduation class of the incubator project funded by the department. We have launched the Living Legends Legacy Trust Endowment Fund to ensure that the legends continue to impart their skills and their knowledge to younger generations. Honorable Minister, your time has now expired. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Tom. Salo Obeke Kileo, Mpatiswa, Nasekela Mpatiswa, Malungu Obeke Kileo, Enzu Yowi Somteto, Kazwe Longe, Amakosa Esebe, Nawama Kumhu, Angle Chisana Nesebe, Kumsebe Nzuao, Abatuli, Abatlali Bekonga, Abazali bombe panya panya no mabona kute. Abapa libe ngwati. Imbungi. Abazobi. Nabobonke abantu abasebenzi sana nesebe ukuba lenze umsebenzi walo. Inga kumbi abantu abacha abalika mvale tubona. Ndivu meleni, nditata lengelo, pambi kwenu, eboni sa umsebenzi owenziwe, likumhu, lale parlamente, eli chongene, nesebe lobu kisa, ninkubeko. Lonyaka, ngunyaka okale kakubi kuti, Inga kumbi, tina bantu bakwe likala le lomu kisa ni nkubeko. Ukale ngo kutata makawe etu. Wasala kwa profesa hotiti le ukala njunyaka. Alande la ama kawe. Obu kisa ni nkubeko. Yanga imi pefu mloyabo. Inga lala ngo kolo. Kulo nyaka kwa kona. Uhulumende usabe ikwelo. Loku baku piyozelwe ikulule minyaka. Kama tibomte, ungolom sila. Utata uholi sasa mandela. No mama, unonzikelelo sisulu. Umatole, umandlangisa, utakane. Aba bantu bobabini. Gama kala umzabalazo. Wale nkulule kwa si kamlayo na mslanje. Aba bantu bobabini. Nga bantu abebe zaz babango bani na. Bafuna ndoni na. Baifuna nja. Zange bangwenele ukubango mnye umtu. Londo iteta ukuti. Inga kumbi kulu chalwetu, zazi ukuba ungubani na, ukwenze elba unga ngweneli ukuba ngomnyumtu. Sukufuna ukuba ngomnyumtu, iba nguwe ka, utate umzekelo omle komnyumtu. Sanu kufunu bangu Obama, sanu kufunu bangu Mandela, Soze nibe nguye. Tatani umzekelo. Umande. Sisi sikaeba eschonge nene elsebe. Sia tasa tata umkomo. Wokuba umsebe nzuetu. Si usekeleze. Pansi kwa lama kwepu alandelayo. Kulisa. Upushlise. Ukukuzelele ubu kisa ni nkubeko. Likuwa kunya zisiwe. Ukuba lenze njalo. Na kumafana makuku etu. Na njengoko usicho. 
umkulu wenkululeko usithi the national wealth of our country the heritage of south, of south of south africa shall be restored to the people kanti ke noma diba ngokwakhe xa kwakubhiyozelwa inyanga yamagugu namafa ethu uye wayichaphazela le nto e robin island ngo 1997 what and tapula in affirming a joint heritage in this place we are reminded that our noble our noble ideals were spent on even more by their long denial that today's unity is a triumph over yesterday's division and the opportunity to ensure that our institutions reflect history in a way that respects the heritage of all our citizens isebe eli liwe liyawenza umsebenzi walo kodwa sinezinto esiziqola seleyo nje ngoko besihleli nalo ezingxoxweni zethu siwuxoxile umba ochaphazela abadlali bemiboniso yeqonga abadlali bemiboniso banya banya noma bona kude ingakumbi ingozi abazifumana bekuzo ngamanye amaxesha engqondweni yam kufika umbaka odwa shweni osishiye kabuhlungu phansi kwemeko zomsebenzi siyalibongoza ke ngoko isebe ukuba lincedisane nemvumi abadlali beqonga bemiboniso banya banya noma bona kude ukuze babonisane on remember let me just take this point of order what's the point of order on remember person i'm really sorry to to stop the member but the member in the in the back is taking a video clip since the beginning and i'm trying to get your attention not to stop the member but i think it's totally out of order now i've indicated to the member that members cannot take video recordings of proceedings if you require a copy then you can arrange with sound and vision to get a clip of the speech as it is being made thank you continue honorable member makuboniswane ukuze abadlali babe nenxaxheba abayithathayo ingakumbi kwezingxoxo zikhoyo kule mithetho isayilwayo iperformance e protection amendment bill b24 of 2016 ne copyright amendment bill b13 of 2017 isebe mali bancedise i actors zethu i performers zethu ukwenzela bazi understand ukuba yintoni eyabo indima ababayidlala siya cela kakhulu lo nto into bama yenzeke kulonyaka mali si sinekuwo sihlalo obekekileyo sijongile njengoko sidla ngokwenza sijonge amaqumrhu angasebenzi kakuhle njengoko isebe lina amaqumrhu amaninzi sajonga ke kuba singena wabona onke la angenzi kakhle la sinexhala ngawo loma umkhu ngupakhofs ngupensalp no national arts council sibe nazo ingxoxo nabo bakhona kwi report yethu kwakhona kwinkqubo yokuqala apha esebeni siyabonwa isebe lizilungiselela ukuqasha abantu abaliqela siyatsho sile committee into ba xa kuqashwa abantu makuqashwe abantu abanezakhono zokuwenza umsebenzi kuba ilusizi into ba athi umuntu eqashiwe funeka aphinde ayowululekwa atrainwe atrainwe lomsebenzi awuqashelweyo siyacela into ba xa kuqashwa makuqashwe abantu abanezakhono kwinkqubo yesibini le nkqubo ifumene u32.2% imali ethe qaxhe kunonyako pheleyo kufanele ukuba njalo xa sijongile kuba kalokho undoqo womsebenzi welisebe ulapha kulenqubo yesibini 
kala letu si portfolio committee yinto ba i infrastructure unit ye department akhange isebenze kakuhle since 2014 and siya kholelwa ekubeni lo nyaka sikuwo kuba ingunyaka wokugqibela kule government term sifanele ukuba ke sime sithi ngqumama umzuzo wana noba uyikomiti noba ulisebe noba uyiparliament noba ungibani na ngqumama umzuzo wana ujonge emva and evaluate umsebenzi owenzileyo ube nguthekwana ujonge uthi ndimhle ngapha ndimbi ngapha ndoniwe yile ndawo unyanisekile akuna kuthethwa into enye oko koko ngo 2014 uqhubeke uyenza lento ngohlobo awuna kwenza into ngendlela enye u expect a different results you can't ukuba ilungi lento ithetha into batshintsha indlela owenza nga izinto ukwenzela izoba izoulunga siyalibongoza isebe into bama malenzela lento kodwa siyavuya ke kuba kwinhlanganiso yethu yokugqibela udj uye wasixelela into ba basethe ikomiti ngoku yabo no public works apho baza ujonga indlela abasebenza ngayo siyayivuyela ke lonto kuba nje ngoba besisendithilo awuna kwenza into ngendlela enye ulindele i different results we have one minute left on remember siyabulela kakhulu si komiti ke department in mphathiswa sekela mphathiswa namagosa udj simfuna la nasebusuku sifuna information kumaqumrhu asebenzisana nesebe sibulela kakhulu ngomsebenzi eniwenzayo kuba kaloku sitsho yonke imihla into ba lo msebenzi ni wenzayo ngumsebenzi wokunikela eluntwini it's plowing back to the people siyayazi into ba akukho nanto eniyifuma nayo ngalo msebenzi ni wenzayo kodwa nina nithe eqolo niyawenza umsebenzi ngenxa yoluntu lomzansi Afrika siyabulela kakhulu thank you honorable member the next speaker is the Honorable Rabotabi. Thank you, House Chair. Kerata Husimolaka Horumela Matsibiso, Ho Malapa Abahaka, Bao Bariko Hetzing, Husimola Motsimul Honyang Wahao, Me Kare A Mewayabo Nairoba Lekakahiso. Kialebo. Honorable House Chair, today as we sit here and deliberate marks another financial year end and the beginning of another. This is an annual practice that helps us to look back and determine whether the taxpayers' monies are well and fully accounted for. Whether we are all learning something out of this is another question. To some, it is about showing how much power they have without providing a solution to the continuous challenges that are facing the department and its entities. House Chair, it is unacceptable the way some entities take their responsibilities for granted and as they continue to play politics with their positions due to infighting and forgetting the mandate that they were given by the Department of Arts and Culture. The department should manage relations between management, councils, and entities by monitoring them closely to know their challenges on time as these could impact negatively on the budgeting outcomes. Honorable Minister, this house needs to be cleaned and it needs your attention, although it seems as though you are doing something about the challenges in your department. It is important that you deal with the rot as soon as possible for the sake of the young and upcoming artists. Honorable Minister, I know how hands-on you are and how much you love and devote your time to the arts. However, Minister, there are concerns about more doors of opera houses being closed down due to a lack of funding. I would like to encourage the minister and the officials to visit these events or some of the concert, concerts and you will see that any notions that this art form being Eurocentric or elitist have long since been dispelled. 
Opera is current. Opera is real. Recently, we learned that another opera company, Houting Opera, and the Dance Umbrella Festival of Johannesburg are closing their doors. At the moment, many young, mostly black singers, are concerned about this. In many countries, opera survives because of financial support from their governments and because of private sponsors. There is an untapped opportunity to create many jobs in the performing arts sector, especially opera. To sustain an opera company means providing work to singers, orchestral musicians, costume designers, and outfitters, lighting crews, and carpenters. Honorable House Chair, it is clear that the budget of this department is not enough to deal with these challenges. We need future Sibongile Kumalos and Priti Yendes. The departments has often spoken about artists that are placed in schools. I have visited a number of schools in my province of the Northwest, I, and I still have to come across one of those artists. Maybe it is about time that we are provided with a list of schools where these artists will be found. House Chair, there is also a growing concern regarding libraries in rural areas, including community art centers. These institutions are very important in rural areas especially. When one looks at the rate that young people migrate to towns for the sole purpose of being able to access centers of this nature, it is very important for this department to always remember the commitment that it made through the following outcomes. Improved quality of basic education. Decent employment through inclusive economic growth. A skilled and capable workforce to support an inclusive growth path. Vibrant, equitable, and sustainable rural communities with food security for all create a better South Africa and contribute to a better Africa and a better world, to mention but a few. To achieve these, we need a better budget to create and embrace the DA's ideals of freedom, fairness, and opportunity for all. And I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker is the Honorable Mkwena. Thank you, Chair. The, uh, the Department of Arts and Culture was part of the delegation that, um, that penned down a document called the Nairobi Plan of Action in 2005. That document was cogent in giving direction to the continent in terms of arts and culture and how it can assist in social cohesion Honorable in member, the continent. Can you just hold, please? Honorable members, there's discussions at the back that I can clearly pick up and it makes it difficult to follow the speaker. Can you just keep your voices down, please? Thank you. Continue, Honorable Member. Thanks, Chair. The, um, the, the resolutions of, of that um, um, document have not been implemented by this department, even though it was part of the delegation. And then the department also had its own document called the White Paper of 1996 which became a white elephant because none of the resolutions of those policies were implemented by the department. Until 2016, when it, draft, when it drafted a new white paper, um, which it aligned to the National Democratic, uh, the NDP. Now, the NDP has a lifeline up until 2030. The new white paper is six years late into that, into that NDP program. It now has 12 years left. And if history is, is, is anything to go by, we will not, we'll not achieve any of those uh, resolutions of that policy document. But the reason why this is, this is happening, the reason why the department is not achieving anything is because the governing party, the, the African National Congress, does not take the arts and culture industry seriously. That department is a dumping ground. That department is a dumping ground 
When the ANC does not know what to do with their leaders, they dump them in that department. And it started with Utata Nelson Mandela, may soul rest in peace. When Utata had the general, the general national uh, government, the government of, gen of uh, the, the government of national unity. Order, honourable members. Order, honourable Paulson. When Utata did not know what to do. Honourable Mukwena, let me yes. just take the honourable Paulson. Chairperson, I, I think you're not protecting our member there by silencing the crowd over there. They can go make a noise outside. No, honor, oh, honorable members, order. Order, honorable members. Order, honorable members. Honorable members, interjections are allowed, but as long as the interjections does not disrupt the proceedings in the house. So if you do interject, let's not make it prolonged interjections. Continue, Honorable Mukwena. When Utata had the, the government of, of national unity, when he didn't know what to do with Ben Ngubani, he dumped him in arts and culture. When the African National Congress did not know what to do with Umama Winnie Madigizela Mandela, when they were sabotaging her and sidelining her, they put her in arts and culture. That is a fact. The list is long. Lulukengwana, uh, Paul Masatile, even Paolo Jordan, when Tabumbeke didn't know what to do with him, he dumped them in, in arts and culture. So the department, and this is not to cast aspersions on, 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 on yourself, Minister. The, it's the ANC. It is the, the attitude of the ANC. It looks as, at, at the industry as a dumping ground. So it is, not, it, it is not led by people who understand the industry and what it should be. It did understand they would understand that it's not about events. It's not about funding events and holidays. They would know that when we speak of a culture of learning, the department should be taking charge. It should be leading the charge. When we speak of the culture of healthy living, it should be leading the charge. When we, it, it should be given direction in terms of the architecture of the Honorable culture. Honorable Mukwena, drive... I want to recognize the member over there. Why are you rising, Honorable Member? Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson, I would like to know if Honorable Mukwena would like to take a question. Honorable Mukwena, are you prepared to take a question? Ma'am, I have a lot to talk about. Can we, I'll come after you. The Honorable Member is not prepared I'll to take a we'll question. We'll discuss it afterwards. Thank Continue, you Honorable Member. Thank you. So when you, when you fly into Johannesburg or Durban, the architecture of the country should tell you that you are in a new continent. It should tell us that we are in Africa. Today, we are still con colonized aesthetically because you could be in Bali, you could be in, uh, in some Tuscan country because our, ta our architecture speaks of those countries. We spoke about language the, the last time I was speaking. There is no uh, 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 institution of higher learning for whom there is a, the, the, the medium of instruction is our indig indigenous language. None. And, and, and we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not speaking, we're not teaching maths and science in our indigenous languages so that they become accessible to our people. We spoke about this the last time. But we can't achieve any of these things because, because the department doesn't, it can't even put together the, the board of Pensal or the, bo the board of, of National Arts Council. It can't do the, 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 the fundamental things because this is a dumping ground um, for the future. And it, it, this, it, this speaks to, to social cohesion. Social cohesion speaks about the, the, the relationship between society and forward mobility. We should be reconstructing society so that it is geared towards the new uh, uh, democracy that we're in now. And that is how you create the, 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 the creative economy that, that we, we're always speaking about. The creative economy is about creating that ecology, that, that, that relationship between society, the creative industry, and the economy. And we, we, we're not doing that. We, we, we are simply following when there's an event, we fund it. Um, when there's a holiday, we, we come out. When there's a funeral, that's when we come out. We're not proactive. We're not creating an economy. There, there, there are some fundamental things that need to be done, Honorable Minister. They, we need to regulate the, the, the industry. The, the artists, the protection bill is nowhere near regulating uh, the, 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 the labor relations within, with, within an artist's life. And, and that's, that's a fundamental thing that we still need to do. We need to now go on a program of giving the tools of production 
to, to, to normal people. So that... Uh, can, I, can I be... Protected? Order, honourable members. We should be given the means of production to, to, to our people so that a young boy who is sitting in, in some dark corner in the Eastern Cape or wherever, honourable when member, they have a story to tell, your time they is can now go to expired. A and they'll be provided with professional tools. So thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honourable Esther Eisen. Thank you, House Chair, Honourable Minister, and Deputy Minister. Although the government stated it values the contribution of the cultural industry to the national economy, not enough is being done to recognize the creative industries as core of the creative economy. The President, the Honourable President said very recently, heritage sites and national monuments have a cultural significance Honourable Esther value Eisen. because of their... Honourable Esther Eisen, I just want to take a point of order there from the Honourable Minister. Honourable Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. We're very keen to hear the members, but if they don't speak into the microphone, it's very difficult. Thank you. Yes, I think you got the message, Honourable Esther Eisen. The President said very recently, Heritage sites and national monuments have a cultural significance and value because of their importance to a community and revealing a pattern of South African history. The sad reality is that the heritage sites in this country in a state are in a state of near collapse. Our municipalities are not maintaining heritage sites within their boundaries. This department was embarrassed recently with the passing of the Honorable late Mrs. Mandela when it was found that huge amounts were just burst to maintain a house in Brantford, and no work was ever done. Is it not a committee of the D DIC's mandate to do oversight and ensure this country heritage sites are protected for our future generations? Honorable Chair, House Chair, it is common knowledge that we have an economy which maintains its weak levels of economic growth. The Growth Initiative for South Africa has identified the creative industry as one of the drivers of sustainable economic opportunities and livelihoods for local communities, mostly in the rural areas, whilst expanding business opportunities for small, medium, and micro enterprises. And to this department's credit, public libraries in this country have taken major steps in transformation, but still have a huge task and a role to play in assisting people as both sources of knowledge and information as well as the supporting literacy. Our poor, especially in the rural areas, do not have the financial resources to buy computers and such, but I have the same need to access of information as any other citizen. This remains a major key to personal development and improvement of social, economic, technical, and, and scientific skills. The must, this must be one of the cornerstones of this department to be inequality through sufficient sufficient and competent library system. And although progress has been made, most libraries are still mostly largely Eurocentric in their book offering. How long will it take for the DRC to ensure ordinary South Africans can read about their own heritage in our libraries, Honorable Minister? And to broaden the base of arts and culture, to embrace the culture of all in this country, this department requires not only the financial assistance through this budget process, but also, very importantly, the skills and management to prevent irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. The IFP support this budget vote. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. I now call upon the Deputy Minister. Zamaisi Wamsevetsi, Minister Mtetwa, and all the ministers uh, present here. The chairperson of the portfolio committee, Metom, uh, and honorable members of parliament, and all our uh, visitors. Uh, chairperson, um, in this uh, budget vote 2018, I pay tribute to Mamawini, a former deputy minister of arts and culture. Um, we also pay homage to the centenary celebration of both Mama Sisulu and Tata Mandela as we obligate ourselves to their selfless commitment and dedication to a better life for all South Africans. Yes, at last year's budget vote, we had made our own commitments 
to the people of South Africa. Our honest question is posed to today. Have our programs been implemented effectively to have made any visible impact in our communities? As you know that each and every year we come here, as it has correctly said by one member of parliament, that we do make uh, commitments, and then this is time for us to look back and see whether really did we implement on some of those uh, commitments that we made. After seeing many destabilizing flashpoints that continued to jeopardize the stability of our nation, our department had seen the need to seek for a more strengthening moral regeneration movement to make our nation stronger together. We are happy to announce that indeed, Cabinet had since approved for a new board to be appointed, of which the minister did, led by the two patrons, the Archbishop Mahoba and the Deputy President of the Republic, to solicit more support for the moral regeneration, as you have alluded to, uh, Minister. The youth sector was made and is still the core focal point for maximum service delivery through the project or programs of Bazaris in the language field, internship, young patriots, national language services, annual ICAFs, and library awareness. All these programs are a call for youth empowerment, cultural tolerance, diversity, and coexistence among South Africans. Indeed, these programs seek to remove barriers of youth unemployment and to overcome physical isolation, obstacles, obstruction, and misunderstandings. For example, program director, already 79 interns have been placed in the department, and a further 24 will be taken in for this financial year, 2018-19. We have also made every effort throughout the past financial year, 2017-18, to not only visit as many schools as possible, but also in the process to empower the youth to lead in these efforts of preservation of societal memory through the annual archives week, oral history programs, and back to school campaigns. We visited, engaged, distributed educational gifts and hosted flags at various schools throughout the country. In schools, just to mention a few, Alfred Stemba here in the Western Cape in Zoletemba, Vulamasango High School in the Free State, Kakisanong, Masiriso Intermediate School in a rural community of Smithfield in the Free State, uh, Kunkwesa Combined School in the rural community of Northern Cape. And just to mention a few, there is a lot of schools that are in line, are in line of uh, getting uh, also these um, opportunities of hosting of those flags. Already this week on Monday, this past Monday, the 7th of May 2018, at Mangaung Primary School, we have started in earnest with our 2018-19 program of ensuring that the profession of archiving is popularized amongst the learners and that communities are constantly engaged on the importance of good record keeping practices. Our communities must be allowed to access the archival buildings for them to witness archival functions and services. Unlike what we came across a uh, chairperson that where umdu e villa pa bonwa obo tswa wa rwabala u fitla late mo sebetseng and then we say ha re mo nke re mo se go record keeping a lo rwabala teng so it means then that we are not taking the issues of icabs very serious in some of the municipalities the centenary celebrations and related exhibition of tata madiba and mama sisulu will be showcasing the different records preserved by the National Archives and Record Services of South Africa. Also, the renovated old library buildings will soon be handed over to DAC to preserve archival records that are 20 years old. Some of this information is now being digitalized in collaboration with the French Institute of National Archiving, including the Ravonial Trial. We are happy to announce that these sound recordings of the Ravonial Trial are now available to listen to on the National Archives website, which is www.nationalarchives.gov.za. You have an opportunity of listening to the entire 
a Rivonal trial that happened in 1963. This is truly befitting because exactly today, Madiba delivered his first ever inaugural speech as the first democratically elected president of the Republic of South Africa after decades of racist oppression. <laughs> Chairperson ad admittedly through thou, we can still do more in the cooperation and coordination of these programs between our department and the Department of Basic Education at provincial levels. In this instance, the National Library of South Africa has been commissioned to draft a national policy on, on library and information services that will guide the ministers of arts and culture and basic education on how to administer the libraries. This draft policy is now completed and will soon be presented to the relevant clusters and to cabinet, Minister Naledi Pando. It will go to the uh, cabinet, we need that support. In the meantime, we are happy to inform the public that Already 27 new libraries have been constructed this past financial year, and 10 of these libraries were modular facilities which are placed close to some of the rural schools. This will ensure that school children are able to use these libraries. Library users with visual impact also have access to library and information services through the partnership with the South African Library for the Blind, currently the only library for the blind in the African continent is here in South Africa. <laughs> for the 2018 medium term expenditure framework, 4.7 billion is already set aside for the community library conditional grant services. And for this financial year, 2018, 19, 29, 29 new libraries will be built and 45 existing libraries will be revamped or refurbished in our communities. This will be a feedback meeting on how the African countries are implemented. That is, uh, the Ministry of Arts and Culture will host a follow-on ministerial meeting uh, with the African ministers responsible for arts and culture and heritage from the 5th to the 6th of July this year. The cooperation between our department and that of basic education and other sister department is fundamental because our mandate, outcome 14, is, entreat, uh, is entwined or crossing over to many departments. Rightfully so, though issues of land, unemployment, and health must be center stage in our debate in this parliament. I know that there are not many people who are keen about issues of land, but unfortunately they need to be debated. Notwithstanding, more telling was the simple message from the President's State of the Nation Address of 2018, which said, I mentioned Tumamina. That took the country and its social media by storm. You are all invited to revisit the lyrics of this great song by our late uh, icon, Brahima Sekala. The message of this song is a vivid confirmation that the arts and culture sector contribute to all these center stage debates. And we must then continue to assert this department's great importance to the nation. This means that the arts, culture, and heritage sector must be for everyone. We must jealously guard against this sector becoming the privilege of the few. It must be a right for all. This is why we will ensure that we continue responding decisively to the calls from the community of Bumbane in the Eastern Cape, Huedera, Branford, Siabuswa, Kailicha, Ntabakandota, and indeed calls from the still excluded communities, art sector such as roadies, fashion, film, dance, theater. You know the portfolio committee knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. uh, Chairperson, thank you very much, Minister, for revising the Mzansi Golden Economy Fund in order to streamline the access to, fin to finance to our artists and arts organizations for the sustainability of their livelihood. If we don't understand how this funding is going to work or what is intended for, is an intervention fund. For instance, if you are a, a young person who have been invited to any uh, American state or even African state to showcase uh, your profession or whatever that you are doing, which is an uh, interest in the country, but because of lack of funding, 
you can't travel to that uh, country. And also because of high requirements in some of uh, our entity entities, for instance, the NAC, then we are saying this is the fund that is available to you in order for you to be able to travel to those countries. So. We had already started working with the community creative at all levels of this sector. We had supported the Kailicha Festival, as the minister has said. And just yesterday, we visited the Zolet Temba community here in Worcester, in the Western Cape. And we committed to the several community projects that included the revamp of their multi-purpose center to include an art center so that these young people and women who approached us yesterday, who are doing their artwork uh, at the back of uh, the yards, others are doing that in a small mukukunyana. And then we are saying, let us make sure that we assist the art center in order for them to be able then to accommodate these young people where they will then uh, do their artwork. I've seen those artwork, Minister, I bought some. Uh, I didn't buy them because I wanted them. I just wanted to boost uh, the economy of, of these young uh, guys. We have also started to engage with the different structures and individuals such as the crafters and the National Dance and Threat Steering Committees, a steering committee established to assist the minister in delivering prompt service to this art generous. All these endeavors must be seen as a socio-economic project that is properly managed, can also deliver continuing streams of revenue for economic development in our communities. Chaperson, notwithstanding the biggest problem of all that can erode or destroy the above mentioned successes and planned intervention, is simply human neglect. The, the failure to act promptly when the execution of our mandate is in danger. Therefore, Minister, I agree with the Portfolio Committee. In some instances, we have good intention as the department, but when it comes to the real implementation of those uh, intentions, then we have a problem with some that we have within the system. Grant and glossy annual performance plans cannot guarantee service delivery to our people. Delegated people need to recognize value and maintain diligence in order for the Department of Arts and Culture to succeed. Therefore, the department can only survive and proper by ability, patriotism, passion, professionalism, and of its human capital. Uh, in conclusion, uh, Chairperson, uh, I would like to affirm the, the common knowledge that says, I quote, when more children get access to the joy of art, it will not be the art alone they will learn. They will have the art of living, thinking, and creating. Oh, yes. Before I say thank you, Chair, I would just like to, if I have a minute of two, to respond on the issue of dumping of members of parliament or cadres of the movement in department like this one. I remember a minister when I was approached by the president telling me that I'm coming to arts and culture. It was after my visit to four, if not five prisons in the country. And then when I raised my concern to the president that the most of those um, prisoners were young people. Is then the president said to me, maybe it's time that uh, we get people who are going to be vibrant and make sure that we change the mindset of the young people. That is the moral regeneration. I'm moving you out of the police, I'm putting you to arts and culture so that we can go out there, address them on the morals in order for them to shift away from committing criminal activities. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. I now call upon Honorable Nguangwa. Deputy Minister, Untabarando, Talika Malgatat, Chairperson and Honorable Members, Maskale City, Uyazi Minister, Gela Klaisha Lagdala, Lems and Safri Busemcha. One of the things that used to happen during the celebration of National Days was that we would showcase our culture, Pana cultural diversity. Yet, if one so good, Tiaban by a Tani City, Vin Babu, Galaban bombs and Africa, Sobaka Subon, who could clang Gums one with Tani Sanjan, who jive and Jan, who and Doni Gokos Bonsu politicians. As this is born, I young Elemis as a Sikogulai. The UDM supports this budget vote. Yes, Ian Drach Mark Mach as Nisomer Ned Vordeni. That is a 
krachtig de concept van Jees vandaag geldt. Wanneer ons samstaan is ons steker. The first and most important priority in your 10-point plan, Minister, is accelerating and amplifying your nation building and social cohesion. In other words, unlike the apartheid regime that had an exclusionary approach to nationalism, this democratic government has a responsibility to build a diverse, socially cohesive society with a common national identity. In this regard, this government has to work hard to build a South Africa in which our people live together in harmony with a sense of belonging, where they participate in building their communities and our nation. However, Minister, we must admit that social cohesion will remain a pipe, a pipe dream so long as our people continue to withstand the most with regards to the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. In fact, it is the failure of government to deal decisively with these challenges that has deepened social, societal divisions over the past few years, which have caused South Africa's miracle transition to 1994, to democracy rather in 1994, to start losing its shine in the eyes of our people. Chairperson, our nation's unity is coming apart at the seams due to, the poor, to poor civil delivery and the failure by government to treat education and basic health care as the critical pathways to development. I remember Umsholo Zungogube Sister Magapume. He made a very important statement in 2019, stressing the importance of your role in education out of poverty. He said it serves as an important ladder out of poverty. As a change by Nyanzo's statement, Kwasa State Wenguye. Chairperson, one of the most important strategic objectives of this department, as outlined once again in your 10 point plan, is to ensure that school curriculum teaches correct South African heritage and history. While much has been achieved in so far as this matter is concerned, we cannot build cohesive societies where the perception out there still exists that the history our children are taught at school is based less on the factual understanding on the pa of the past, but more on a historical narrative that is shaped by the ruling el elite whose intention is to glorify its leaders while maximizing the role of other struggle icons. Not enough, for instance, is in our history book is told about icons such as Mangali Sosobukwe and other struggle icons. The Koi people continue to feel marginalized more than 20 years into our democracy. Without justifying minister, his racist policies or that of his government, which caused untold damage to our people, we cannot change the fact that General Jan Smarts played a leading role, both in the formation and the establishment of the United Nations and the Commonwealth of Nations. Our children deserve to know that aspect of history, both the good and bad. By acknowledging the good parts of history and the good contributions of leaders across the political spectrum, while loathsomely rejecting the negatives, we said. Your time has expired, Honourable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Honourable Nkwankwa. Thank you very much, Honourable Nkwankwa. Thank you very much, Honourable Nkwankwa. I call upon Honourable Vessels. Achtbare voorzitter, een van die belangrijke taken van hierdie departement is nasiebouw en sociale cohesie. Die vraag is of die departement en die regering hiermee slaag. Indien ons na baie Suid-Afrikaners se optrede en gedrag teen oor mekaar op een dagelijkse basis op sociale media en elders kyk, dan is die antwoord helder en duidelik nee. En ons gaan moet kyk Hoe komt is dit die geval? Hoe komt val die regering met nasiebou? Baie gemeenschappen voel uitgesluit en gemarginaliseerd. Nasiebou, geachte voorzitter, kan niet dier wette afgedwing word nie. Nasiebou moet vrijwillig geskiet en uit die hardheid kom. Die regering se recept vir nasiebou is verkeerd. Ons pluter van een sportbijeenkomst naar die volgende. Van een vakantiedag 
na die volgende. En ons erken nie werkelijk diversiteit in Zuid-Afrika nie. Ons praat daar oor en ons noem dit in toespraken oor hoe ons verenig in diversiteit is. Maar verstaan ons dit werkelijk? Als we gaan kijken naar andere landen waar nasiebouw wel slag, dan is goede voorbeelden Ethiopië, hier in Afrika. En als je gaan kijken waar elke taalgroepering in Ethiopië wel erkenning geniet, waar hulle talen moedertaal onderig ontvang, en waar elke cultuur en gemeenschap wel een plekje in die zon heet, dan werkt daar die recept. Diezelfde met Zwitserland. Artikel 6.2 van ons grondwet bepaal dat aangezien tale historische inkorting geschiet het, moet die regering praktisch in daadwerkelijke maatregels daarstel om die status van talen te verhoog en hoog gebruik te bevorderen. Gebeur dit? Ik denk niet zo so nie. Ons het elf ambtelijke talen, maar ons het niet eindelijk nie. Ons het tien ambtelijk en een supertaal. Wanneer daar oor taalbeleide van universiteiten gepraat wordt, wordt daar die universiteiten slechts vir Engels. Daar wordt niet bijgevoegd nie. Wat van die ander inheemse tale? Wat van ons ander tale in Zuid-Afrika? Moedertaal onderig moet als een prioriteit gezien wordt. Een weenrecept is waar diversiteit erkend wordt. Ons kan niet net van een sportbijeenkomst en van een vakantiedag wat ons als nasiebouw beskou, aan Pluter nie. Ons moet werkelijk als Zuid-Afrikaners gaan kijken hoe ons mekaars diversiteit kan verstaan en erken. Elk in zijn erfenis, achtbare voorzitter, in hierdie land moet erkenning geniet. Daar moet bijgevoegd worden en niet weggevat word nie. Diezelfde met taal, diezelfde met erfenis, die erfenis terrein. Ons moet eerder bijzet als wat ons wegvat. Ek dankie. Thank you very much. I now call upon Honorable Soleli. Soleli. Lochan. Chaperson, allow me to pay tribute to all the fallen heroes and heroines in the arts sector, especially our legend Brahu Masekela and Ray Chikapa Piri. Their contribution to this industry is equal to none. When politicians were silenced, these legends and many more who are still living, such as musician and po musicians and poets, carried out the message of hope inside and outside South Africa, that one day we will be freed from the clutches of apartheid. We applaud the department for launching the Living Trust Endowment Fund. This initiative will not only increase economic support to the legends, but it will restore their dignity. Chairperson, the Department of Arts and Culture play oversight role on 26 public entities. It has ensured that all these entities have complied with the submission of their annual performance plan timelessly. As the portfolio committee, we are satisfied that indeed those, that those APPs are aligned to the key priority programs and projects of the, of the 10 point plan of the Department of Arts and Culture. We further analyzed that whether their programs of action is structured against the strategic outcome oriented goals. Importantly, whether they are aligned to the NDP, particular chapter 15, that mandate the department and this entity to integrate arts, culture, language, and heritage into all sectors of national life. Chairperson, 80% of the total budget of the department is allocated to the entities. In 2014, the Portfolio Committee on Arts and Culture, after interrogating the annual reports of different entities, took a decisive resolution that it will pay more attention on the entities that had red flags as per the findings of the Auditor General. We then identified that the following ent entities need more attention. The Penn South African Language Board, Performing Arts Center of the Free State, Nelson Mandela Museum, National Arts Council, Dizzo Museum, and Freedom Park. The major reason was also to oversee the reasons why these entities failed to discharge their mandate as per the legislation of Parliament. We made it clear to them that it's not about us or them. It's all about our people 
especially artists, whether if they do get value for money, that is appropriated by this parliament to these different entities. Let me start first by pencil. This board was established in order to promote multilingualism, to develop official languages, and to protect language rights in South Africa. I must stress for all to understand the importance of this board. It is the only chapter one institution established by the founding provisions of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Therefore, it is paramount that governance and management of this institution is not compromised because of issues that are not of strategic importance. I'm raising this matter because our findings as a portfolio committee when we were doing oversight was all about the attitude of the stakeholders in that institution. Never, nevertheless, I can boldly report that the institution has improved very well in the previous financial year due to the appointment of a CEO who had the love of language development. And we hope the current developments that are in that institution will be resolved speedily. We don't want to see that institution reversing the strides that they have already made in the previous financial year. The second institution that we visited is PECOFS, Performing Arts Center of the Free State. In our findings, when we visited PECOFS, we find that artists do not get value in that institution. It's a fact that PECOFS does not perform its mandate as per the legislation. There is absolutely no development of artists at all. What we do is just to pay salaries. That institution, Chairperson, has leadership crisis, both in the board and the management. Chairperson, the situation in that entity has direct indictment to whether the department does monitoring and evaluation of the performance of its institutions. We therefore request the executive authority of the Department of Arts and Culture to take decisive and hard decisions to restore the dignity of that institution. We are happy that Nelson Mandela Museum and the Freedom Park, after we visited them to do the oversight role, they heeded the call and rectify all issues that were raised in our findings. I must highlight that these institutions are very critical because they are the direct legacy of the de democratic government. Chairperson, I could go on with all the entities, but due to the limited time, I must not hesitate also to give praise to other entities that are performing very well with the transformation agenda of our government, especially on the outcome 14 of social cohesion and national build, nation building. Let, in, let me invite all South Africans to visit the War Museum of the Boer Republic in Bloemfontein, which will be soon known as the, the South African War Museum. The institution has embarked on a transformation agenda of rectifying the wrong history that was told about the war. South Africans need to know that Africans fought hand in hand with the Africaners in that war. Many of our people, especially women and children, perished in that war. We are happy that the department has erected a wall of remembrance in honor of those African and Africana women and children who perished during that war. Chairperson, as I conclude, the Department of Arts and Culture and its entities need a cadre, a new cadre of public servants. Servants who will, provi who will provide specialized care and support to the artists, who have love of the arts, who have got love for cultural sector, and not see it as a vehicle for them to get salaries. We urge the, execu the executive to reintroduce programs to them that are promoting social cohesion and nation building. ANC supports the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Soleli. Honorable members, there will be a slight change from the speaker's list. I will now call upon Honorable Bilangulu. Oh. 
Nabang Chairperson, my debate will be focusing on two of the ten points plan, which is heritage promotion and preservation. And the program is responsible for the identification, collection, safeguarding, promotion, and transformation in South African heritage, archives, and libraries. The Department of Arts and Culture will continue with the funding of the rollout of community libraries and archival infrastructure design to preserve national memory, promote informed reading, and the writing nation. Honorable Chair, it is also the responsibility of the department that the library conditional grants to be utilized in monitoring, upgrade of libraries, purchase of relevant and needy books, and also to improve ICT connectivity. The department will also prioritize the equipment and capabilities to render services for the visual impaired, like the DM said. Honorable Chair, 105 libraries has been built from 2014-15 to 17-18. The department will also financially support building and revamping of 29 libraries, and most of the planned ones are in rural areas. The 29 libraries are distributed in all provinces in our country. And that shows the commitment by the department in making sure that our mandate as the African National Congress is taken care of. Honorable, Honorable Chair, the Freedom Charter calls for the doors of learning and culture to be open. Our late icon, a leader, and the first black democratically elected president, Tata Nelson Mandela, once said, I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you use to change the world, close quote. Through the Community Library Service Grant, the department is tasked to transform the landscape of the learning by ensuring the provision of infrastructure facilities and services primarily targeting previously disadvantaged communities like Zamani in the Lipompo province, MP Stream Library in Pumalanga, Impumelelo Library in Gauteng, Alice in Eastern, Eastern Cape, Uppington in Northern Cape, Bilanyoni in KwaZulu Natal, Van Standards Ras in Free State, Litabong in the Northwest, and Hrundal in the Western Cape, to name the few. 4.5 billion is earmarked for this purpose over the medium term in the public library service subprogram. A key imperative of the Community Library Services Grant is, is the provision of upgrading of public library infrastructure to this end. The department plans to build 96 new libraries and upgrade 150 community libraries over the MTEF period. In collaboration with the Department of Basic Education, the department also plans to build 70 dual library service points to support school curricula and enhance learning outcomes. Honorable Chair, the budget allo allocated for building community libraries is 365 million. The aim of the program being that of providing library infrastructure that promotes a culture of reading and contributes towards educational outcomes and library services 
accessible to communities. This an unquestionable commitment by the department and the government of the African National Congress to overcome the systematic division of apartheid in education and reflects the department's vital role in ensuring that every municipal ward is serviced by a library. National automatic archival information retrieval system will also continue. And a budget of 3.5 million has been allocated for that matter. The community libraries grant has employed 1,924 staff on contractual basis to date. Honorable Chair, the struggle for freedom and democracy must be documented in all languages where libraries must promote the literacy works of local and African writers. Because in these words of Italian, Nelson Rolin Tlatla Mandela, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, in his language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. The use of indigenous languages must be promoted. This must include the urgent inclusion and diversification of statues, places in the union building precinct and other high profile places in order to reflect uh, African history. Honorable Chair, the redress and transformation agenda in the heritage sector also include the implementation of legacy project, transformation of geographical names and reconfiguration of heretic representation. There, there have been significant strides in ex establishing new he heritage infrastructure such as the Ngome Museum and the installation of statues of former President Nelson Mandela and Kosi Albert Lutuli. And also in addition to that, the memorialization of significant person in South African history such as Lillian Goy, Helen Joseph, and Rahima Mwosa was done through his upgrading of, of their graves. In the words of the former President Nelson Mandela, I quote, our children are our greatest treasure. They are our future. The system of apartheid robbed many children of their rights to a decent education and of the joy of reading. This joy is one that I have treasured all my life. And it is one I wish for all South Africans. Through the work of the ANC-led government in prioritizing these programs, your time has expired. Uh, I call upon Honorable Sheikh Imam. Oh, okay. It's fine. I don't see him in. Remember, he's running across many uh, uh, debate, budget debates. I'll then move to Honorable Khrod Boom. Honorable House Chair, I want to take a moment to pass my and our party's condolences to the well-known educationist and the anti-apartheid act activist, uh, Professor Graham Block, whose parents were brutally murdered in a house uh, robbery last week. But Honorable Speaker, looking at the current state of our country and the widening gap of racial disharmony, this quote touches a nerve as it's incumbent upon us as parliament, members of parliament to set an example as our actions and utterances are examples to the public. The quote of V. v Punchu who says that art, freedom, and creativity will change society faster than politics. Honorable House Chair, I have to acknowledge our government's funding of cultural festivals across the country. These festivals bridge the cultural divide as arts cuts across cultures and builds social cohesion. Speaking about social cohesion, the intention of the government is good. However, the government must put in more emphasis on the cultures, heritage, and histories of the Khoisan communities. We cannot continue to marginalize exhibitions that depicts the Khoisan as a first nation of South Africa. The Department of Arts and Culture has spent a lot of money on conducting nation building and social cohesion community conversation. 
but the department has yet to enlighten the committee as to the outcome of these conversations. If these conversations are not breaching the divide between cultural groups, they are sadly in vain. Our aim is and should be to remain to bring South Africans together under one national anthem and under one flag. Race relations in South Africa is in need of serious makeover. We owe it to our children to, to build on racial harmony that was displayed by the first democratic parliament of South Africa. Currently, only the DA is working to ensure that democracy in, in South Africa does not die an untimely death. We need to restore, shut up. We need to restore the race relations in South Africa. Honourable which members, are being eroded by political figures Wong, who utter... Can I take a point of order, please? Honourable Lamin. Thank, so thank you so much, Honourable Chairperson. I rise on rule number 85, the language that is being used by the member. Thank you very much, Honourable Member. I withdraw. Honourable Khod Buom, can you withdraw those words, please? I withdraw. <laughs> May you continue then? Honourable House Chair. We best express ourselves through our language of choice. We found our cognitive base in the tongue of our mothers. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, excluding and vilifying others based on the language has no place in a democratic South Africa. Pensalp, Pensalp must come to the party and fight to protect and promote all 11 languages. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, I would like to highlight the case concerning House Chair, concerning the demonizing of Afrikaans through the closing down of Afrikaans school as driven by Panyasi Le Sufi. This seems to be driving a wedge between cultural groups. Honorable, Honorable Minister, the silence of Pensrap, who has to drive the language issue, is deafening. And I think, uh, but now Pensrap has no head, nor does it have a board. Having said that, Honorable Minister and Honorable House Chair, language must never be used as a tool for exclusion. I acknowledge that this department has created jobs under the Mzansi Golden Economy Program. However, these jobs are not sustainable. Even though the relief is temporary, it does contribute to poverty alleviation. And when you know the face of poverty, is, it must be applauded when people are given an opportunity to empower themselves. The department must prioritize sustainable job creation. A day government will allocate more funding for the creation of cultural spaces where the artistic community can have more avenues for expression. This will bring art communities, uh, art to the communities that cannot afford to go to theaters or concert. My colleague spoke about funding for the arts dying up and government giving less funding for operas and the so-called Eurocentric cultural expressive nodes. The DA will look towards tax incentives that co for companies that donate to the arts. Art can lead the way towards moral regeneration of our society. And even though the department has given money for the restoration of our core values and moral fiber, we still do not know whether these programs have a positive impact on our society or not. For a country to flourish in artistic expression, it is important to restore the moral fiber by investing in value-based programs to restore our moral fiber and focus on individual responsibility. Honorable Minister, your department has cut down on key targets from 65 to 38. The targets that have been reduced mostly center around monitoring, evaluation, and accountability. Honorable Minister, these are the key components of managerial responsibility and accountability of this department in order to ensure that people get value for money and the government money is used responsibly. A day government will focus on key issues of monitoring and evaluation to ensure that there is freedom of artistic expression, that there is fairness in the workplace for all, that there is opportunity irrespective of political affiliation and diversity where all are embraced regardless of race or creed into the true democratic ideal. I thank you.
Thank you, Honourable Member. The next speaker is the Honourable Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Honourable House Chair. <clears throat> the National Freedom Party welcomes the report of the Department of Arts and Culture tabled here today. Honourable Minister, allow me to start off by expressing my disappointment and that, Honourable Minister, you are one of those that attend cabinet meetings in this precinct. Every Wednesday, if I understand it correctly. And you, walk, and you see a plaque there that says, Statesman, Warrior, Farmer. And you do nothing about it. I remember asking in the condolence motion that we put a statue or plaque of the late Honourable Winnie Madika Zela Mandela. I've even asked that you remove, if necessary, that of the Bwata statue. It would be the appropriate thing you do under the circumstances. Yes, indeed, he was a warrior. He worried everybody else that was not white in South Africa. Why should he still be there? He was a farmer that stole our land. Why should he be there? How can we call him a statesman and still leave that statue there? I'm saying, Honorable Minister, it's time to do something about it. And let's remove it and honor the correct person, and that is our late Winnie Mandela, who served this country and served this world. And I think it's time that we did that with urgency. Now, Honorable Chairperson, a matter of grave concern to the NFP is the inability of the department to spend its allocated budget. And we're calling on the department to basically handle its affairs in a much better manner. And I know that under the new ministry, there has been some success, and I'm quite certain that in time, we will be able to achieve that. One of the challenges I think we have as Minister or House Chair is that whilst we've identified that there have been weaknesses and promises were made and not kept, there is really no consequences for this. And because there's no consequences, there's a repetition year in and year out. People tend to be making the same mistakes. Now, we talk about 27% uh, uh, um, of the population unemployed at this point in time. But we have vacancies. I see vacancies on vacancies. And I think one needs to address why is there so much of vacancies year in and year out when we have a high unemployment rate. Is there something we're not doing correctly that we need to actually change? Now, Honorable Chairperson, we need to also take into cognizance the fact that, rightfully speaking, the Khoi and San people are the indigenous people who rightfully own most of the land in the Western Cape and other areas in South Africa. But what repeatedly happens, and I know the Democratic Alliance will never give them their right no matter what you do. Clearly, they're not going to do that. Now, what are we, what are we saying is this, in terms of them, they have many heritage sites which government has identified for them. But the challenge that we have is some of these things are already occupied by other business or whatever it is. We need you to address that and look into it and do something, including the Khoi and San languages. Must be recognized, because after all, they are the indigenous people of the South Africa, and we must give them due recognition. We also think in order to recognize them, if we're talking about a statue and we're having them all over, we should have one of the Khoi and the San of the very first people that have put, set foot into this land. Rightfully, I think that is the least we can actually do to accommodate them. The other thing is this, we want to say, Honorable, I don't know how many minutes I've got, uh, Chairperson, or how many minutes left, because there's no camera. <laughs> Honorable Chair, uh, Chairperson, the Indians that have set foot in South Africa Order, Honorable Members. decades ago. Sheik, Honorable Sheikh Imam, you have two minutes left. Eh? Two minutes, okay, thank you. Two minutes, no. They've come in decades ago as came in here as laborers. Yes. Now, what has actually happened is this, although there are certain centers, but those centers are not effective enough for our people to be able to identify the history, identify their families, exactly where they come so there can be some uh, 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 cooperation between our people here, our forefathers, and those that where we came from. We don't seem to be having that in the centers that, and particularly there's one in Durban, but I think it is inadequate and maybe we need to look at that and see if we can actually strengthen that uh, 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 so that we'll be able to, to, to give more to the people, uh, uh, the Indian community in South Africa, which for a large extent appears to be kept out of the equation for some reason or the other. Uh, that's the other issue we have. Now, I was going to touch on something very, very important. 
There is some site very close, I think it's Rhodes Memorial, very close to the, the, the mountains. There is some particular business that seems to be occupying that place. And when these Khoi and San people want to go there to visit that heritage site, it's got all lots of stuff of a restaurant that's stored in there. In fact, they have, it's called Jessica's Restaurant. And these people are unable to go there and access that area. And I think we need to deal with that for them as well. Right? I, I, I think you want me to be finished, all right. I, and remember, that. your time has now expired. Sorry? It has now expired. Okay, thank you very much. The National Freedom Party supports the report table today. Looking forward to the statue of Winnie Matikas thank you, Honourable Member. to be put in there at the precinct in due course. Thank you. All the Honourable Members, the next speaker is Honourable Makondo. Thanks, thanks very much, Chairperson. Uh, the Minister and the Deputy Minister, members of Parliament, fellow South Africans, and guests in the gallery. Let me first uh, correct, uh, Chairperson, very few misinformation which uh, some members of this Parliament have. Uh, let me start with Honorable Mukwena. Uh, the NAC has a board, uh, and we miss you, uh, Honorable Mukwena. You must come to the portfolio committee. Uh, the other issue is relates to Pensalp. The portfolio committee, it's in the process of appointing the board of Pensalp. So, so we welcome you. Uh, honorable member, let me just take the Honorable Mukwena. Honorable member, why do you want to be recognized? No, Chair, uh, I didn't say the uh, NAC doesn't have a board. I said we can't put together a constructive board. That's what I said. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. All the Honorable Members, continue, Honorable Member. Th thanks, 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 Chairperson. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, Honorable Mukwena is on and off camera doesn't mean that the ANC doesn't take this department serious. It does. Uh, take this department very serious. Uh, in 2016, Chair, we had uh, an oversight visit in Limpopo. Honorable Rabutapi was there. He saw some artists. But today he's select to forget. It's fine uh, if he's select to forget. But there are artists in schools. The schools that he visited, they might not be artists in those specific schools that he has visited. But that doesn't mean that artists are not at school. Ch Ch Chairperson, I stand here today on the 24th year of our democracy. Yes, I can proudly say with no fear of contradiction that as a nation, we have come a long way. Today is better than yesterday. And tomorrow will be much better. This year, Chairperson marks the centenary of the celebration of President Nelson Mandela and Umama Albertina Sisul. And again today, marks the inauguration of President Nelson Mandela from the 10th of May, 1994. <laughs> it is the ANC's view that for a nation building and a social cohesion to thrive, it is imperative that citizens embrace diversity and accept one another as equals. And for a country that has endured over 360 years of systematic exclusion of indigenous people, while the minority groups were indoctrinated with the myth of superiority, it is important that there is a space for a dialogue, emotional healing, and redress. Black major majority cannot continue to live as visitors in their own country. While the settlers live comfortably well, when our black pe people live without land and opportunities. South Africa has long troubled and divided history. Today, however, our country is much better place to be than it was before 1994. 
No longer do black people have to enter through the back door, and no longer does the cruelty of segregation and apartheid dictate our everyday lives. Today, we can all truly confidently step forward to take our rightful place as equal before the law. This right, however, Chairperson, has not come without a collective South African effort. This right exists because of selfless act of bravery of countless men, women, and youth who fought tirelessly to liberate us from economic, political, intellectual, and cultural poverty. Yes, this right is one of, that, is one of the ones that we have to give gratitude for on a daily basis. It is a sad truth that the legacy of apartheid still exists in both intangible and tangible forms. However, Chairperson, the ANC is working with vigor to defend the Freedom Charter and abolish all apartheid obstacles so that we can continue to keep the doors of learning and culture open for every citizen. The Department of Arts and Culture is at the very core of this idea. Honorable Chairperson, for South Africa to be a successful state, we have to build relationships that will bind citizens to, towards a shared future through its museums and, and art centers and other entities of various projects of the department. The department is making a significant stride in linking the values of arts, culture, and heritage to economic development and nation building and social cohesion. Mzansi Golden Economy must be supported by both government and parliament because its intention is clear. It aims to empower the artist, but this cannot be achieved if the Copyright Amendment Bill is not fast track. The Copyright Amendment Bill is before this parliament with the Portfolio Committee of Trade and Industry. And as Arts and Culture Committee, we'll work with Trade and Industry Committee. And yes, in passing this budget, it must not be business as usual. The Arts and Culture Department must take rightful place, its rightful place because Arts and Culture Department is the custodian of arts and culture and heritage in South Africa. Our artists cannot continue to die as paupers while their riches is kept away by collectives, collecting societies. Department of Arts and Culture must take part in the process of amending the Copyright Amendment Bill as the bill in its current form has ripple effect on the artist. The Copyright Amendment Bill, as it is, artists are saying, will be in contravention of the Constitution, particularly Chapter 2 of the, of, of, of the Constitution, which is Bill of Right. Yes, as the ANC will always be with the people, in this case, are the artists. We have heard them, Chairperson, when they are saying no to a single collecting society per sector because that will perpetuate the abuse which our artists uh, are suffering under these collecting societies. The success of this bill will ensure that our artists do not die as poor, and the ANC will always be on their side. As ANC government, through the Department of Arts and Culture, we have spent over the medium term $123 million on Zanzi Golden Economy, this is the money that goes direct to artists through different projects and programs. As such, such as Indoni, Cape Town Carnival, Kalahari Desert Festival, Mapungubje, Gauteng Carnival, Pelayarona, Clip Town, Public Arts Seminar, and many more throughout the country. Yes, Honourable all member, this money Honourable goes member, to I'm recognizing Honorable McQuena. Why are you rising, Honorable Member? Um, I'm just checking if uh, the speaker will take a question. Honourable Member, are you prepared to take a question? It's not prepared to take a question. It's not prepared to take a question. I'll talk to you outside. Thank you. Continue, Honourable Member. Yes, Chairperson, all this money goes to the pocket of the artist. And that's what the ANC government is doing. And as, as I have said, the ANC will always be on the side of the artist and make sure that our artist do not die as poor. In the year 2017 and 18, the department spent 15 million on, arts, on artists in schools program. 
which just Comrade, Rab I mean, Honorable Rabbit Rabbit has said he has never seen them. This has created 700 job opportunities to artists check. deployed over the, over the 300 schools in the country. Honorable Member, I'm just recognizing the Honorable Paulson. I just wanted to ask the speaker if he'd answer a question as to whether the no, Honorable is Member. on the side of Black Coffee as well. Honorable Paulson. to tour in Israel and, bef and performed in Order, the Honorable Members. Israeli. Order. Honorable Paulson, the Honorable Member has not said he'll take a question. Honourable Member, you must now conclude. Thanks, thanks very much. As the ANC, we support this program in this financial year because it creates employment to our artists. And in summary, Chair, South, South Africa's creative industry contributes 90 billion rand to the GDP, which is 2.9% to the GDP, surpassing agriculture uh, of 2.2% contribution to the GDP. In short, artists arts and culture and heritage sector play a vital role in South Africa's economy. And yes, as the ANC will always support this. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call upon the Honourable Minister of Arts and Culture to respond to the debate. Honourable Minister. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Honourable Members. Uh, I want to recognize the recipients of the National Orders of Ikamanga, uh, Hot Sticks Mabus and Nage Diribane, who are here with us uh, today. And uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Th thank you, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Actually, the, the bill, the Copyright Bill and others, we have started arranging workshops as it, it continues. Uh, we'll start with the launching of USIBA Awards uh, at the end of, of this month. The issue of the film uh, and TV actors, my colleague's colleague uh, Naledi uh, Pando is here, will tell you how I push uh, on that matter. It's, it's accepted the, the occupational and health safety of the, of the actors. The infrastructure, uh, it, this one chair would be difficult because it's the purview of uh, DPW. We'll continue to engage them, but it's out of our control. I mean, uh, it's uh, judging arts and culture through the implementation is difficult. Uh, on the pack offs, I can say that uh, there is new Vega chairperson. Uh, we've engaged the entire organization with the board with a little bit of uh, 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 changing here and there, and uh, it will come around. I must remind members that we have 25 entities, uh, Parkoffs is one of them, and most of them are doing very well. Uh, Honorable uh, Rabotapi, the issue about uh, the operas, uh, our heart goes out to them because for us, all the genres of arts, culture, and heritage are important. Uh, here, it's a simple question of not having enough finances to finance this one. I know the Gauteng uh, opera, uh, as it were. And uh, on the artists in schools, um, they are there. They are there, um, but not all schools uh, teach arts. Not all of them. You'll only find them where some schools uh, teach arts. The issue of libraries, we are building them. Honorable Mukwena, um, the last time I heard of, uh, from you, you were talking about the art bank. You made an issue about that. I thought you were going to come here and say, no, we have seen progress now. There is Art Bank in South Africa. We launched it. We launched it last year. But the issues we are raising uh, are further from the truth that the Department of Arts and Culture has not done anything since 1994. There are a number of, uh, firstly, we invest in youth through scholarships. We have seven universities here in this country where students are trained in arts and culture uh, to, to build uh, artists uh, and have skills. We train them through incubators, through mentorship programs. I don't know whether you know about that. We build academy, academies in this country. And these academies and all these things, including festivals, by the way, which are important and they are playing their role in, in social cohesion. And, and if you say, Youth should not be, an artist should not be funded because they have festivals. I think uh, you'll share that view yourself. 
Um, the touring ventures are important and will continue to fund them because they expose our artists. Honorable Minister, yeah? let me just recognize you, Honorable Mkwena. Why do you want to be recognized, Honorable Member? Or Honorable Members. Not just funding, not that they must no, be No, Honorable Member, that's not a point of much. order. Thank you, Chair. Order. Continue, Honorable but Minister. What I can say, uh, Chair, all in all, is that thanks to the members of the Portfolio Committee, all of them across the board, uh, those who are attending, of course, uh, which, which we have seen from uh, all organizations, I think that our society is surely, steadily recognizing the fact that arts and culture is key to social identity, to national identity, and, and, and ensuring that our country move forward. There are programs which will continue to do. Uh, Honorable Sheikh Imam, the issue about the, the, the Kohen Sun is taken. But not that the government is not doing anything about it. There are programs of government where Koi and Sun language is used which we have started, we can still do more. The coat of arms of this very republic recognizes the foremost indigenous people in this country, which is the Koi and the Sun. So, and I invite you, where is, where is uh, Honorable Sheikh? Say Amil. Ah. I invite, Upi, I invite him, well, I invite him to go to Hrunkluf. If you want to see the Stirman brothers, the Koi and Sun warriors, if you want to see Domen in their life size, he must go there and check, and we will continue to ensure that our country move forward, and we use this, especially with the liberation heritage route, to ensure that the spaces uh, of our country are dealt with. The issue of the state is talking about here, uh, all I can say to him and other members is that the Minister of Arts and Culture is the final arbiter. Somebody else must apply for that. So if you want to engage me from the beginning, who's going to decide whether or not to change the statues in this country? But thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Honorable Order, Honorable Members, you are reminded that the debate on Human Settlements budget vote will take place at 16.15 in the Old Assembly, and the debate on communications will take place in this venue also at the same time. That concludes the debate and the business of this money plenary. The money plenary will now rise.